Amen. Well, at this time in our service, it's a time for our kids' corner. If the kids could come and sit around this and a little space here with me, that would be great. There we go. Awesome. There we go. Amen. And if they're shy, they can sit there. It's okay. But come on up, guys. It's okay. All fun. Welcome, welcome. Have a seat. Welcome. Good to have you here. So, let me ask you. You guys know what this is? A newspaper, the Dundalk Herald. A little plug for them. <laughs> Our community newspaper. I like your tie, by the way. Oh, did you see something there that grabbed your attention? Yeah, <laughs> those are pictures from our church when we had our VBS this summer. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and what else do I have here? This should be pretty easy. Yes, a Bible. Yes, so I have a newspaper. I have a Bible. Some of the, they both have some things in common. What do newspapers do? What do you think? Why would you buy a newspaper? Yes to read it, but what does it provide you if you read it? Anything? Any ideas? Dixie, do you have an idea? What would a newspaper provide if you were reading a newspaper? Could, yeah, maybe a parent reading a newspaper? Any ideas? News crossword puzzles? <laughs> Not where I was going, but okay. <laughs> I heard news. Yeah, so relevant stuff that's happening today. So this is our local paper. So, you know, you look on this, they've got some information about what's happening with council, you know. Uh, John used to be our mayor. So, he, you know, his name used to be in the paper all the time. And then, you know, you've got Martin, he's a counselor. So, you know, maybe his name's in here. There you go. And look, we got to be in the paper too because the newspaper wanted to share news about our VBS. So you find out all sorts of neat things, and pa different papers have different stuff. Sometimes it's about sports. Here's something with sports right there, and all that kind of stuff. You, so you read the newspaper to learn more about what's going on in your community, or maybe in your province or country, or maybe even in the world. So this provides some information, all right? And sometimes newspapers even have like weather details about the weather and all that kind of stuff. So Helps you learn about what to do with the day. Well, the Bible has some similarities with the newspaper because it provides information. What kind of things can you learn when you, if you read the Bible? Any ideas? Who could you learn about? It starts with the name J. The first letter starts with J. Yes. <laughs> what? Okay, <laughs> not where I was going again, but yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not doing well here. <laughs> Yo, yes. Joe talked about Genesis. Yes, that's true. It talks about Jesus as well. Some information. Are you going, oh, no, why did I think of that? <laughs> but it talks about all sorts of stuff. It can help you understand more about God, more about your faith, and can even understand more about yourself. And the Bible teaches us lots about how to live our life. You know, it's the word Bible can be used as an acronym. And that's, an acronym is where you take all the letters of the word and you make a, and make a sentence or a saying out of it. So if we took B-I-B-L-E for Bible, we could say basic instructions before leaving earth. And so... This is good to find out about stuff happening right now in your community. This is really important about happening with God and with our in our world and ourselves. So I encourage you, you know, to it's good. Yeah, that's exactly it. I was going to say I encourage you to uh, dig into the good news, which is the Bible. Okay. All right. We're going to pray, and it's still clipboard Sunday, and so after I pray. You can get a clipboard from Carolyn at the very back, but you have to stay in the sanctuary with us. And uh, after the service, I'd ask that you put the clipboards back with Carolyn, okay? So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, just thank you, Lord, for, uh, for your word and for the 
privilege it is to be able to access it. Not everywhere in this world we know, Lord, is your word uh, readily available. So we thank you, Lord, that we can turn to it whenever and wherever we want. We can read it. We can learn from it. And, Lord, we ask that you help us to, as we do, to understand it. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so you guys can get clipboards if you'd like, okay? Awesome stuff. <laughs> Not right now, but after, okay? Thanks, guys. Very enthusiastic. I love this. <laughs> there we go. Well, that didn't go quite as planned, but that's okay. It's all good. So, guys, today we are going into Psalm 122. If you have a Bible with you, if you have it on your phone, I always encourage people to uh, open that up, to follow along. We're going to be reading the entire psalm. It's not that long. It's only nine verses. So, again, that's Psalm 122. It will also be on the screen uh, behind me. So I've been a part of this church now for over seven years. Can you believe that? I can't. I can't believe how fast time has gone by. But I'm now in my eighth year. In the beginning, I wanted to learn more about the church and what, what got people to be a part of this church. I, wa I was really wanting to know the connections. And so all the way back then, I, I asked a simple question to our church, and I asked for written responses. I it wasn't supposed to be long or anything like that. I just said, you know, share your thoughts on this. And the question I asked is, what do you love about this church? What is it that you love about this church? And I was really happy that I got a lot of responses. And so I, I'm going to share some of them from way back when. You might even go, hey, that was mine. I'm not sharing them all because I think I had gotten over 30 responses, but I'm going to share some with you, and they kind of sum up the uh, different things. People had mentioned the same sort of thing. So here we go. When I asked, what is it that you love about this church, one person shared, there are many, many reasons why I love the church, but I'd have to say the most important reason is because God is here. Another person boiled their response down to just three words. Hope that helps. There you go. They must work for the newspaper, right? Hope that helps. Another person wrote, you know that feeling when you walk in the door of your home where your shoulders relax and you take a deep breath? That's what it feels like to come here. Feels like I'm home with my family. I really like that one. Another person shared, I love the friendship and the caring among the people. Another shared, Dundalk Wesleyan Church opened my eyes, which in turn opened my heart. Love this church. Another said, the love that I feel and the hand of God tying Sunday school, worship, the sermon, and my life together. Another person shared, I love my church because I get to share my love for Jesus with my church family using my gifts and talents. I love that. Another shared, I am in the stage of life now where I come to church to be with the family of God, to soak up God's presence, to hear from his word and hear his word for me, to unite it to unite in praise and worship with others to fill my empty cup. Another person shared a powerful moment when uh, the church met them in their brokenness. They shared, when we lost the girls 15 years ago, I will forever remember and cherish the group hug that we received from the entire church. No words of condolences meant as much at that moment of love and friendship. One last one. Another person shared, I love the opportunity we have to worship God and to live life connected to each other in love. Those were all really good responses. There was another one about loving their pastor, but I wasn't going to share that. So <laughs> self-serving, right? I come for church for the pastor. <laughs> and no, I didn't write that one myself. <laughs> Those words reveal a lot about this church, and it says a lot about the impact that the church has had on, on us. Today, our focus 
will be on one of the greatest gifts God has given his people, the gift we call the church. Psalm 122 was written by King David. Yes, that same guy who uh, fought Goliath and who became the second king of Israel after Saul. Psalm 122 is actually a song. No, I'm not going to sing it for you, but it is a song that David composed. I'm always impressed with David. He was uh, a king. He was a warrior. He was an artist. You know, Psalm 122 is a song that God's chosen people, the Israelites, who later became known as the Jews, would sing as they traveled across the land to gather together to, in Jerusalem to celebrate the major feasts at the temple, the place where God resided. It is a song of joy. It is a song of anticipation. It is a song of worship. It is a song that reflects some of the wonderful things about church. So we're going to get into our scripture, but first, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to this time, when we turn to your word, we ask for your blessing. Lord, use this time to encourage and to strengthen us in our faith. Lead us through this time so that we may learn and grow. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And with that, we're going to get right into Psalm 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stands the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. That is a beautiful psalm, and I'm sure you're thankful I didn't sing it. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. There is lots to be thankful for when it comes to the gift of the church. Today, with the help of our scripture, I'm just going to highlight uh, three aspects that we can be thankful for when it comes to the church. The first aspect of the church that I want to highlight is that there is joy in worship. There is joy in worshiping God together. I hope you felt that today as we were singing, praising God. Our scripture begins with, I rejoiced with, the, with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. David shared his excitement to go to the temple and worship uh, God with others. We are made to worship and glorify God in all that we do. Worship is one of the fundam fundamental aspects of who we are. Scripture tells us that we were created to glorify God. In Isaiah 43, verse 21, it says, they, the Lord shares, I should say, they are the people I made for myself, and they will sing my praise. Psalm 150, verse 6 says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Though we can worship God alone wherever we are, there is something unique about worshiping God together. Jesus promised that his presence would be with us when we worship together. Jesus said, for where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Jesus is in the house of the Lord. Amen. Many Christians have the privilege of taking part in short-term mission trips. Uh, there is a lot of benefit for Christians to do so. One of the benefits is to experience worshiping God with other Christians from different parts of the world and that have different uh, cultures. They may speak different language. You know, they may worship God in different ways than you're used to. It's really, really wonderful to experience that. And uh, it gives you a greater understanding of what worship is and what the church is. Back in 2014, I had the privilege of going to Ensenada, Mexico, with a team to help construct a new and much larger church building for a church that was meeting, actually, in the pastor's home. And there were so many people that the house was filled, and they were actually standing outside the window and door to be a part of that. It's fantastic. 
gives you that kind of biblical image that, you know, when you're reading in Matthew about, you know, people surrounding the house that Jesus is in. So we were there to help build this uh, church building. And so we were, we, when, while we were there, we lived with the Mexicans, we ate with the Mexicans, we worshiped with the Mexicans. And one evening, our uh, team arrived early, and uh, I had been practicing some Spanish, asked my wife, who is French first, I'm terrible at other languages. I struggle with English, so, you know, anyway, I tried to learn some Spanish phrases. I did my very best, but I'm going to tell you, I wasn't very good at it, but I tried, and I actually practiced using it when I was there. And so one evening, I was there, we were there early, we got to the church, we got to the pastor's home before many of the people in Mexico arrived. You know, that's a cultural thing too. Canadians, you said 7 o'clock, we're there 7 o'clock. Mexicans, you said 7 o'clock, yeah, <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, 7-ish, which means between 7 and 9, right? Anyway, we were there and we were welcoming the people uh, as they came. And I was, you know... I was greeting everyone in Spanish, saying, good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm shaking everyone's hands. Well, like I said, we were there first, and we pretty much greeted everyone. And then the pastor came, and he had tears running down his uh, cheeks, and he was laughing so, so hard. I asked, what was so funny? He said, what were you trying to say? Because he could speak English. What are you trying to say? And I went, uh, good evening. He said, you're saying nice bum. <laughs> Just imagine that. I'm like, welcome, nice bum, nice bum, nice bum, nice bum. <laughs> I almost died. I never said that phrase again. It was either hola or it was in English. Yes, yes, but I don't know. Anyway, there you go. I'm not going to try it. So, <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that I thought was pretty cool about my time in Mexico was that the Mexicans, I found out, were worshiping with songs that were the same songs we sing. They just sang it in Spanish. We sing them in English. They sing them in Spanish. And so here we were, part of a church service. The music is playing. I knew the songs in English. I knew the songs. The, the rest of the uh, mission team knew the songs. And so here we are, music blaring at the probably dial 11 on a dial of 10. It was going loud, and the Mexicans were singing in Spanish. The English Canadians were singing in English. And we all sang the same song together, united. What a joy it was to worship with my brothers and sisters in Christ who were Mexicans. You know, that night, there was no distinction. There was no barrier. There was no Mexican, no Canadian. There was just Christians worshiping and praising God, glorifying him together. The second aspect of the, uh, I want to share with you is that there is joy in the unity of the church. In our psalm, starting in verse 3, King David shares, Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together that is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There's a lot of symbolism there. And, you know, we don't like, we like our space here in Canada. We like our, our, our yards and all that. And there, there, David was praising the fact that everyone's so close because symbolically showing the unity of the community. Unity is not only an essential aspect for the function of a healthy church. It is a blessing for all who are part of it. We experience unity when we worship God together, as we experience today already. Uh, I couldn't hear my voice while you guys were singing, which was awesome. You know, it was just wonderful to hear that. We experience this unity when we worship God together and praise him, but it goes further than that. We experience unity when we practice our faith together. That's why you're encouraged to be part of a small groups, to experience that unity, that fellowship. It is with others that we celebrate the sacraments. Today, we're going to be celebrating communion. And it's together that we celebrate the sacraments. We do not baptize ourselves. We do that together. We do not 
take the Lord's uh, Supper and practice communion on our own, by myself. We do that together in the community of fellowship. It's good that we are able to do that. You know, it's one of the things that Paul highlights as he's talking to the Corinthians in his letter uh, to the Corinthians. He shares this about communion. But listen, as I share the, the, these verses, listen to the sense of unity. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks our participation in the blood of Christ? Unity with Christ. And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Unity with our brothers and sisters. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. There is joy in the unity of the church when we practice our faith with one another. Along with worship and taking part in the sacraments that Christ instituted for the church, we also experience joy in the unity of when we get to use our gifts, our talents, our abilities to strengthen the church and to learn and to serve with each other. Pat Stewart highlighted that in her praise today. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 tells us, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meaning together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. One last one. I want to highlight for you today is that there is joy in the peace that we share together. Starting in verse 6 of our scripture, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who, uh, who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. The church is a truly amazing place. I didn't start going to church until I was 19. When I started going to church that very first Sunday, no church experience, I felt I was home. And it brought me to tears. This was what I was missing. There are so many things that set each of us apart. It's truly amazing to think of all the differences, not just from the places where we were born or maybe our first language or the food that we like, but so many differences. I know some of the things that I love doing would be someone else's torture when I go and do a really long run. They're like, what are you doing? But hey, but we're all like that. We have our likes and dislikes. We're all different. Yet, God has united us. He has brought us together. You know, it's like that puzzle piece where, you know, you complete me. It's wonderful. You know, instead of a group of individuals, we are blessed to be part of a community that is built on the love of Christ and mutual respect for one another as we follow and live by the word of God. It says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. The church is a work of progress. We're not perfect. We all mess up. We all get on each other's nerves at times. Yet God believes in the church. He believes in us. You know, in his wisdom, he's put us together. I give thanks for each and every one of you, knowing that you're helping me to grow in my faith, just as I'm doing my very best to help you to grow in yours. We need each other. Give thanks to God for the church. Do all that you can to help strengthen and edify the church. That's build up the church. Never take the church for granted. It is a gift from God. And like all living things, it needs to be cared for and it needs to be loved. With that, let us close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the church 
and all who are part of it. We thank you for the fellowship that we share with one another and with Christ. Lord, we ask that you bless this church, bless this fellowship. Help us to walk faithfully to, in step with Christ, to love the church and all who are part of it. In Christ's name we pray.